So thank you so much for okay. joining us today, for taking time off. Uh, My before, pleasure. Before, before I get started, I just want to uh, say hello to all the audience and of course Dr. introduce Dr. Raki. Uh, Dr. Raki Yadav is actually the consultant pediatrician and head of the Department of Pediatrics in Aradamansara mm -hmm. Medical mm -hmm. Center. And uh, of course, she is also a vaccine uh, advocate, uh, early nutrition specialist, and so she's very, very uh, prolific. Just check on her profile. Uh, you can click into a link and you can see <laughs> all her extension. Um, she's, early, uh, she's also an early uh, nutrition specialist as well. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Raki, for taking time off your busy schedule to be first. And you're very, very active on all the social media platforms, we we'll see. And, uh, yes, yes. And I learned that, of course, it's com it comes from a very good place of you wanting to educate because there's just a lot of a misconception that's around uh, the COVID-19, especially in the vaccine. So without taking too much time, I just want to dive straight into it. And I uh, just to start, you know, absolutely. I think um, before we go into the more common myth, and I personally uh, has been getting a lot of feedback and uh Anybody who is actually watching this, please do not take me, you know, just, just, just bear with me, you know, I'm not trying to stereotype. But a lot of my friends have been telling me, especially some of the older folks, um, they, they actually have taken the first dose because they're the first to get, get on the vaccine, right? I mean, because they are prioritized. And just because they take the first dose, uh, apparently they, they've been sort of like partying and been going out because they think that they are now immune to that. Is that a, a, a case or scenario that, uh, that you guys are witnessing or, or is this hearsay? No, no. I, I think because we're in our third lockdown and those of you in the Klang Valley, certain parts of Slango and KL, it's like our EMCO at the moment. So a lot of them I've heard in the first part when the vaccines all started coming out, they were actually post-vaccine parties. You know, like people thought, oh, one dose, I'm protected. You know, they didn't realize that it actually takes two doses for a two dose vaccine there are some single dose vaccines but the the most the ones that we have in our country are two dose vaccines and it takes two doses and two weeks after the second dose for you to be fully protected and that's for the original covid uh, covid-19 infection i'm not even talking about the variants you know for the variants is like it's much less protection after the first one so yeah i mean i have been hearing these stories that people go out people hang out have like small parties birthdays reunions weddings you know after the first um, dose and it, it's detrimental i mean you're not protected and you can risk transmitting. And we have seen quite a huge number of people that got infected after the first dose. You know, so it beats the purpose of you getting uh, the, the vaccine totally. And I just lost uh, a friend's father just a week ago. After he got his first dose, he was exposed to someone who was positive and subsequently passed away within a week of the infection. So, I mean, it's so, so sad to hear such things. And we have to realize that getting two doses is very, very important. I am uh, so sorry to hear that, and uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And actually, there's a there's a request. I don't know whether it's your friend, uh, Vrina, three o five. Ah, no, no. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the thing is, also now, frankly, I'm a bit concerned doing this interview, right? Most of my interview are like lifestyle, you know, but but this is a serious topic, yeah. right? And 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 really, yeah. I want to learn from you, and and thank you so much for uh, taking time to do this. Now. I was under the impression, or uh, I was under the impression that e even you're protected after the second dose, after the two weeks period, it just means that uh, you you maybe still get the the disease, but you're asymptomatic, or or, or you're totally won't get the won't, won't get COVID nineteen, or is it you will get it but they okay. are asymptomatic? So we must realize that vaccines are not 100% foolproof, right? right? So the main reason we're vaccinating everybody is number one, to prevent death. We don't want people to die of the infection. We don't want uh, people to end up in ICUs. And that's a huge burden on our healthcare. As you can see, all hospitals in Klang Valley are putting up SOS. They can't take it anymore, you know? So we want to reduce death. We want to reduce hospitalization and ICU. And of course, we want to reduce severe COVID because it's these three categories of patients that actually end up um, either dying early or end up with what we call long COVID, long-term side effects of the infection, okay. you know? So vaccines don't protect you completely. We want to protect the worst and the severest form of the diseases. 
so that all you end up getting if you do um you get a mild form of the disease or you're completely asymptomatic and you're fine like a simple flu okay. you know so we're not we're not targeting to prevent the whole thing we want okay. this to sort of be like a flu where you know it's endemic it is in the country it will happen on and off but most people survive very rarely if any would actually succumb to the disease so that's the main reason we're advocating vaccines that was the initial part and now we're advocating vaccinations because of the variants that form yep. so we know in in any virus uh, infection so mm-hmm. virus mutate. mutate that's just what they do you know Very so fast. every time a virus enters a new host it tends to mutate it goes into the cell of the host it mutates and makes copies of itself right. so every time it makes these thousands of copies one small code is abnormal in one particular copy and that's how it forms mutations right. so there are thousands of covid-19 mutations already out there but not all of them end up as variants right. you know so we have a few variants of concern various of interest and these variants are the ones that uh, have a propensity to cause more severe infections and death and if you have a smaller amount of vaccinated population that's where you have more virus transmitting among healthy people or immunocompromised that means your immune system is not as good as others and these are when the variants actually form so you know there's so many reasons why we should get vaccinated fully so the thing is so from what I gathered, from what you shared, you know, we are not 100% protected. You know, maybe we get a milder form of... So meaning we are still able to transmit. So like for instance... Yes. So for instance, like me and my wife, you know, we, we are vaccinated, we are protected, but our children, because they are not of the age that they can be vaccinated, yes. we could actually bring home COVID-19, so to say, and transmit yes. to them. Is that right? So we still need to exercise... If you are not vaccinated... Definitely. So the target, the, the reason we're vaccinating the elderly group is because we want to reduce death and morbidity in them. We yeah. don't want them to be very sick and die. And the reason we're vaccinating the younger one is to reduce transmission right. so that the workforce adults like us don't bring back the disease to our, our children, don't bring back the disease to, to family members who are unable to get the vaccine for whatever various reasons. You know, So we want to reduce transmission. We want to reduce death. So that's the reason why we're vaccinating, right? And nothing is 100% in life. You know, um, you know, dying in a car accident, there's, there's a certain percentage of risk, but does that mean we stop driving a car? I mean, we have to get from place A to place B. So same thing with vaccinations. There's always a risk to anything in life, but you've got to put the risk versus benefit. Yeah. You know, um, getting COVID-19, there's a possibility of me dying, me being completely disabled, me being uh, ended up in ICU for months versus getting the vaccine where there's some side effects in the first two days, but most of the time there's nothing and, and we go on living as per usual. Yeah, we do our best. We lift the rest to, to, to God. Okay. So Absolutely. now, apart from this, what are the most common myths that you would like to, you, you think that people need to know? What are the most common, two, maybe two common myths that people need to know about the vaccine? Two? Uh, oh gosh. Okay, I'm going to very quickly name a few. I've listed a couple because so many of my patients have asked me. <laughs> so, um, hi, 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 Julian. Hi. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just quickly list them down. And if you have any questions to why they are a myth and not a fact, then you just let me know and I will go into them. So number one, COVID-19 vaccines do not cause COVID-19 infection. All right, so that's something that you have to be very clear on. The vaccine does not cause an infection right? The COVID-19 vaccine does not alter your DNA, okay. right? A lot of people say, oh, it's going to all go, come into my body and I'm going to be microchipped and the world's going to know where I am and what am I doing and all that. That's absolute myth. So no, it does not alter your DNA. Um, and some of them also say that, oh, it's a very rushed vaccine. Less yep. than one year already got vaccine. Hey, less than six months already got vaccine. No, it doesn't mean that it is. it's not considered rushed because mRNA technology was actually discovered in 1961. Okay. So this has been in research for many, many years. And there's already mRNA uh, uh, technology in the production of a cancer treatment that was already there in 1995. So this is not new technology. It's just that it is, it is technology that has been researched for many, many years. And now that we find this is really good technology to produce the vaccine for COVID-19. Okay. And that's why we rolled it out. So that's, that's another one. That is not a rushed vaccine and it's absolutely researched so that we know that this is something that's coming up, uh, 
you know, proper stringent background, right? right? And um, another one that a lot of people say is, if I've had the infection, there's no need for me to get the vaccine. I've got natural protection. You know, God gave me this body and I'm naturally protected. Mm -hmm. Yes, God gave you the body, but God also told you to take care of the body. Yes. All right. So it, it studies have shown that if you get the natural infection, your immunity wanes within a few months, yep. right? So it may not last you a lifelong period. So you still need to get the vaccine. Right. There's still um, a little bit of, guideline issues in terms of when you should get the vaccine previously they said three months after the infection at one point they said six months after the infection but you actually can get the vaccine as soon as you're well so the right. moment you've recovered you've got an appointment just go get go ahead and get the vaccine all right um uh, and then some people say that if you hold your breath for 10 seconds you're considered healthy and you don't have covid uh no so when you yeah. hold your breath for 10 oh. seconds you're just you're just testing your lungs, right. right? So it does not mean you don't have COVID because you can still have asymptomatic COVID. You can yep. still have the mild form of yep. COVID yep. And, and those don't affect your, your lung at all. So holding your breath for 10 seconds just signifies you have some sort of lung disease. You know, for all we know, you're a smoker or something and you can't hold your breath and right. that's probably attributing it rather than the COVID infection itself. Sure. Um, another one that the mamas who come to see me, right? I'll have a lot of mama friends and a lot of mama patients. They said, you cannot breastfeed if you're getting the vaccine. Make sure you pump and dump. Make sure you stop breastfeeding for one week, two weeks, or God knows how long. Absolutely rubbish. You do not need to interrupt your breastfeeding. Okay. You do not need to stop breastfeeding. Okay. Please breastfeed before and after. The only thing I request from you as mothers is when you come back home, mandila, have yeah. a bath, Definitely. right? Have a bath, clean yourself, breastfeed as per usual. All right? Okay. And the other thing, like you mentioned, the vaccine parties is a uh, mask. So some people feel, hey, I already vaccinated two times already. No need to wear the mask. No need to follow SOP. I just wash my hand once a day. Like, enough for you. Mm. No such thing. Yep. You still need to follow the SOPs, especially if you're living in Slangor because the rate in our community is so, so high. Yes. And as of today, our vaccination rate in Slangor is only 6% that is fully vaccinated. So it's a very, very, very small amount. You cannot afford to 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 let go of any of these SOPs because you still need to protect your children. You still need to protect um, certain groups of people that live with you. So yeah, that's, that's basically the, the gist list that I took that the most common questions that I got from my patients. Okay. Thank you so much. So the thing is like, what about brands? Do you get questions about brands of vaccine? Are they any different? Of course I do. So, so there are five brands in Malaysia now. So uh, we all know Pfizer. Everybody is like Pfizer. Fi it's Pfizer. The P is silent. You know, there are a lot of pronunciations, you know, but it's Pfizer. So um, then we have uh, AstraZeneca and then we have Sinovac. And then we have the two that just joined on board but haven't been put out yet is the Johnson Johnson um, as well as the, um, there's one more that just came out into the market. So it's... Moderna? Oh, no. Uh, no, it wasn't Moderna. No, no, definitely not Moderna. Um... Oh, shoot. Now, I, I just, it just slipped my mind. You know, it's one of those that's at the tip of your tongue, but you just, you know, can't remember. So anyway, Johnson Johnson, a single dose. Oh, Can Sinobio. So Can Sinobio as well as Johnson Johnson vaccine are single dose vaccines. So they plan to uh, give this to like industrial workers, you know, all those construction workers and all because it's single dose, you don't have to come back for a double dose. So in that sense, it, it's uh, broader protection, increase herd immunity, faster rate. So the three most talked about vaccines are once again, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, as well as the Sinovac. Um, so if you're going to ask me which one's the best, which one should I take? All three are WHO recognized. Sure. All three as of today, maybe two hours ago, are EU recognized as well. A lot of people were worried about the AstraZeneca and all that. EU has officially recognized it as well. So all three are WHO, EU recognized, and all three have gone through stringent, strict processes in the research and development of the vaccine. I would not be picky and choosy at this point. My statement and my stand is still get the fastest vaccine you can get, yep. right? People are saying, oh, if you get this vaccine, I can't travel here. Who's traveling? There's nobody going to be traveling. And once traveling opens also, the moment tourism opens as well, no country is going to be left behind and say, I'm not going to take your vaccine. I'm not going to take this vaccine. This is going to say, okay, okay, as long as you're vaccinated, you're allowed to enter the country. Yep. You know, so please just get the fastest vaccine that you can get. Don't worry about the variants. Don't worry about all the other aspects of it. Um, some of you may have personal medical issues. In that case, discuss it with your physicians. I'm not giving personal advice here, but discuss it with your own doctors to see which one um, is suitable at which part of your treatment. 
Thank you so much. So my stand is still the fastest vaccine that you can get. I was going to make that disclaimer, you know, but Dr. Rocky is very, very, uh, very, very professional, but we are not dispensing any, any advice. We just want to... Any personal you. advice. Yeah, so Absolutely. it's very contextual. Every time refer to your own... Uh, your your, med, your medical practitioner, yeah. So I was gonna say this, yep. but you got to let me finish the sentence, okay? I know how to. Pronounce, <laughs> I'm a China man, but I know how to pronounce Pfizer <laughs> because I was an ambassador for them. And do not think otherwise. It's not the blue. Pill, it's not Viagra, because uh, together with okay. Henry Golding, uh, Henry Golding, there used to be a program called Man Care. So basically, uh, a, okay. a group of celebrity, myself, Henry Golding, uh, Sharizan Bohan. Okay. Uh, was uh, so we, we we spoke for breast cancer because just like breast cancer, I mean without oh. think too much. They think it's a women's uh, women's uh, disease. Yeah, but firstly, there is men who get breast cancer, but it's very rare. But the thing is, like yes, yeah, fifty percent of the population, fifty percent of the people that we live with are women. My wife, my, my you know. So that's why there was a that, so th th that's a side note. So coming back to that, so I know yeah. Pfizer not yeah. because of blue pill. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so coming back to uh, coming back to 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 that now without getting too too political or anything, you know, with now we are in a lockdown. Why why are we not seeing the cases come down in 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 particular in Selangor? Or is it because there's more testing so that we know more of it? Is that why or, or why why suddenly it seems like the number is not st stabilizing? There's so different. many reasons to that, you know. It, it's not just about one factor, you know. It's multifactorial, I would say. Yes, our vaccination rates are low, right? Like I mentioned, 6% in Slango. Um, I think it's about 20 or 30% in Kuala Lumpur. So main thing is your vaccination rate is low. Second thing is the numbers that we're testing in Slango is much, much higher than any other state in Malaysia, right? And if you look at the case infectivity rate, it is actually between 7% to 9% and that number has not come down. Despite the five to six weeks of almost lockdown that we've been having, that number has not come down. So there are so many other factors. Uh, places that are meant to be closed are open. You've got clusters within certain offices, clusters within certain factories, you know, and you've got clusters in the low-cost housing areas uh, because these are the people that, that can't go out and get uh, vaccinated. These are the people that don't have the same opportunities as the others in the urban areas. But, but you know, you, you want to say that, you know, it's because of this one thing. That's why Slango is not doing well. No, it's actually multifactorial. There's so many reasons why this is not happening. And I think we just got to just hang in there we still have to do what we can do. Stay at home as long as you can. Um, there's so many ways. I think we're just going to go into self-care and all that, whatever that yeah. later on. But do your whatever self-care that is needed. Stay at home. Follow the SOPs and the public health measures that we have in place. And make sure you get registered for the vaccination. It will come to you sooner or later. So far, touch with everybody who's messaged me on my Instagram. They're like, Doctor, when am I going to get my appointment? And I'm like, just hang in there. You'll probably get it within the next one week or so. And oh, they'll send me a message, Doc. You bring me luck, you got my appointment tomorrow. You know, so, so many have actually said that. So all I'm going to say is hang in there, get yourself registered and make sure that you, you have all the details in your MySajatra uh, app accurate. Because a lot of times one digit is missing and you yep. don't get the prompt and your notifications on your app and then you miss the appointment. You know, so there are multifactorial reasons behind it and we've just got to hang in there. Yeah. Happened to my brother-in-law, but we got that sort, sorted out. So, yeah. So, I, oh, I'm, that's good. I'm waiting for my second dose of Sinovac, so, which is okay. 16. So, yeah. so now, okay. coming back Wonderful. to that, is it safe to vaccinate the children at the moment? Okay, so the World Health Organization... The Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices, which is by FDA. You've got the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, you've got the CDC. You've got the FDA. Everybody has agreed that vaccinating children 12 years and above with the Pfizer, the mRNA vaccine, is uh, acceptable, right? In our country, there's a little bit of a you can, you cannot, you can, you cannot. That's, but that's basically uh, because there's not enough vaccine and we just want to prioritize our adults, the, the seniors, the elderly, uh, the phase two and phase uh, three fellas before we actually go down into the, the children batch. So as, as of, I think, about two, three days ago, um, they've announced that 
you children who've got some medical issues or are immunocompromised, they have some sort of immune issues that uh, reduce immunity, will get the vaccine. And it's not blanket rule to everybody, but it's not because of the side effects or anything. It's basically, it's just fear mongering, yep. you know, oh, don't take it yet. There's a lot of issues. No, it's basically because there's vaccine shortage. Yep. You know, there's so many places that don't have enough vaccine. I personally have volunteered in several places and it's like, you know, you've got this huge hall and everybody's just waiting for someone to come and get vaccinated. And, you know, one person will trickle in, another person will trickle in. And then you're like, what's the point having a mega PPV that can vaccinate 10,000 people yep. when only you're vaccinating about 1,000 a day? Yep. You know, so obviously there's a vaccine shortage. So that's the only reason why they're not rolling it out, blanket roll, everybody 12 years and above to get it. But it's absolutely safe. It is a little bit of a moral, ethical dilemma going on because some people say, oh, but Kids generally don't get infected very much, uh, very mild, sometimes asymptomatic, don't have any much diseases. So why need to vaccinate? No need what? But sure. they forget that there is such a thing called MISC, which is multi-system inflammatory dis uh, disorder in syndrome in children, which yep. can happen four to six weeks if a child is infected and asymptomatic, no symptoms. Four to six weeks later, they get this full immune shutdown. I mean, this inflammation all over the body and yep. about almost 4,000 children have died because of this uh, worldwide. In Malaysia, I think the number was about just slightly above 10, you know. Um, so the, it, people, children are still dying. Children are still getting infected. In Malaysia, the latest number that we got was 120,000 that children below 18 years old that got infected with COVID-19. That's a startling 25%. So that's a quarter of us being infected i mean so why leave the children out just because you know or this so that's what i'm saying it's a moral ethical dilemma going on they can die they can develop long-term effects so we should definitely vaccinate the children if and when the vaccine uh, supply becomes more stable yep. we're going to come back to that uh very shortly i just want to give a shout out to uh, dr jason leung who has just joined us on uh, ig live oh. Dr. Jason Leung, Hi. I just want to thank you personally for the public service announcement that you have done. Thank you so much. It was brilliantly done. So coming back to the children and uh, we're talking about the, uh, the dilemma. I, I, I think that my personal feeling is the truth is we do not know yet, right? The long-term effects of the COVID, even they might be asymptomatic now, but we never know what's going to happen. And the truth is we do not yes. have history. We do not have track record. So it's best to get them vaccinated, right? So absolutely. I'm gonna just sorry before just to just to touch a little bit on one of the main things everybody is talking about with regards to vaccinating sure. children, which is myocarditis or pericarditis. You know, um, a few cases in Singapore. Um, I think a few days back, a kid just dropped it and had a heart attack and died. You know, so a lot of fear mongering is going on with parents, and I think it's absolutely important for us to know that myocarditis is basically inflammation of the heart muscle. Pericarditis is inflammation of the lining of the heart. Yeah. All right, so they're basically inflammation of the heart that can make you get symptoms like palpitation. You you feel your heart beat a bit stronger, abnormal uh, heart rhythms, uh, difficulty in breathing, sometimes chest pains, and this has been seen in mainly boys. After the second dose of uh, the Pfizer vaccine, right. um, four to six days after the, set, the Pfizer vaccine, but the numbers that have been reported are just slightly, so myocarditis happens regularly due to most viruses and all that. But the numbers that we're seeing is just slightly above the general background rate. So it's not something that is alarming. Something that parents have to realize is, so now you've got COVID-19 vaccine and you may, may not, may very small, small risk of you getting myocarditis. But if you get the COVID-19 infection, you get full-blown heart uh, inflammation. You get full-blown uh, um, problems with the heart you can have a cardiac arrest because you've got, instead of a small particle or an RNA or, or you know, a small kill virus, you get the whole virus right. that's affecting the body. So it's not just the myocarditis you will get, you will get inflammation of a lot of places. So it's, it is something that you've got to look at the risk versus benefit. And at this point, the benefit far outweighs the risk of getting the vaccine rather than getting the infection. So that's, that's just to touch on a little bit about myocarditis because I'm pretty sure some parents out there do read up and they, you know, they suddenly get certain, I've been WhatsApp so many times with this and I just wanted to put it out there that there is a small risk, but at this point, your risk of getting COVID-19 is much higher. And like you said, the long-term effects in children is something that we really don't want to take a risk on. Yeah. And of course, uh, we're also talking about variants, right? So we do not know if, yep. if they might be protected now. We do not know how, 
how the variants will evolve. And talking about variants, and before we get into the variants, and uh, we are sensitive of your time uh, because we took six minutes to go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want no to have any questions for doc doctor, uh, we might not be able to take it, but after this session is over, we'll post it. Maybe you could type it on the comments and maybe uh, doctor could, could answer them at a later stage. Now, talking about variants, uh, and this is really something that affected me and I, I have no, no, no way to verify it, right? So, I, you know, I, 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 I'm on Sino. And the, the moment after I took Sino, two days later, and they actually say, you know, oh, Sino doesn't protect you from Delta. So, I feel like, is that, <laughs> I mean, is there an answer or, or we do not know? Okay, so the thing about Variants. Okay, so when I mentioned, if, if anybody missed the beginning part of this IGTV, please go back and listen, the part where I talk about how virus mutate and what actually happens. So mutations and variants can develop, and some of the variants actually self-destruct and the virus kills itself. So those are the good ones. We want them all to die and disappear, right? We want our life to get back to normal. Yeah. But then there are some that, that mutate and they become nastier. They become stronger. They they learn how to evade the antibodies from a vaccine, right. from a treatment and all that. But like I mentioned, vaccines are not 100%. It's not a silver bullet. We okay. still need to have all the other public health measures. So it's not just one thing that, you know, this is a vampire, I shoot a silver bullet and it's going to die. No, it doesn't work that way. So variants of concern and variants of interest. The one that we hear a lot about is alpha, beta. You've got the delta and you've also got the gamma. And now the latest one is the lambda. Yeah. I know there are a lot of fancy Latin words, yeah, but yeah. it's basically a bunch of different categorization of different names of different mutations that have happened to make the original COVID-19 vi uh, COVID virus nastier, right? So vaccines in general give previous ones to so the original COVID-19, 100%, like I said, the death, the hospitalizations and the severe diseases, 100% protection. But now we've done research mainly for Pfizer, Moderna, uh, AstraZeneca and Johnson Johnson. So these four, we have papers, we have data that shows that there is protection, but after the second dose, Okay. right? So if you get a single dose of either one of these, it's around 30% to 40% protection. Okay. But if you get two doses, it goes between 60 to 90% protection against the Delta. I'm just talking about the Delta. Sinovac, however, China doesn't release much data to us. Okay. So we don't have any data. But we do have a small anecdotal paper from Guangzhou. Yep. Is that, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Guangzhou in Guangzhou, China. Yeah. Um, that said that there is neutralizing antibodies and it does provide protection against the Delta variant. But you know how Chinese are? They're very secretive yeah. about you know, what they want to release, what they're going to say. So even the previous uh, Sinovac data that we have is from other countries, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Turkey, uh, uh, Brazil. You know? So all these other countries that have actually given us the data, not China itself. Right. So we're just waiting for absolute data. But for me, it does give you some protection. So don't worry about it too much. Just get the vaccination. Like I said, the best is the fastest that you can get. Don't be so kanchong. I didn't get the right one. Maybe I should get another one later. <laughs> because at this point, you definitely want to get some vaccine in because there's so much of ongoing trials that are looking yeah. at mixing and matching, that are looking at topping up a vaccine with uh, uh, with another uh, mRNA vaccine. Like I'll give you an example of Bahrain. Yeah. So there's a country called Bahrain, very small population, but Bahrain started vaccinating their population with Sinopharm. Yep. Yeah which is also a China-based vaccine. And they realized that there were a, a few cases, breakthrough cases, and you know they started seeing a surge again. And what they started doing was they started topping up with Pfizer. Okay. So all those who got their two doses of Sinopharm got a, got a single dose of Pfizer. Come you know, here. So we're looking at science changes. <laughs> There's going to be so much of new change that's going to happen. So don't be kanchong. Just yep. get the vaccine. You, I also believe in positive mindset. We if you think I'm protected, you're going to be protected. Yes. yes. You know, if you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, you're surely going to get it. So positive mindset, get the fastest vaccine you can get. And unfortunately, the only data I have for Sinovac is that one small anecdotal <laughs> study. And if anybody has any other data they want to share with me, please DM me as well. I'm more than happy to learn as much as possible. Sure. Uh, and as we were saying earlier, you know, doctor is not offering... Uh, personal consultation here is just general yes. debunking the myth. If you have exactly. questions, uh, you, you really have to see your own uh, medical practitioner or if you want to choose Absolutely. to see uh, Dr. Raki, you have to go see her personally as well. But that's not the, her intention yeah. for today. <laughs> so finally, what, yeah. what, 
what uh, possibly we have this last question. What do you want? What are your thoughts about the variants currently, or or do you think we already covered? Okay. I I just want to mention that in our local setting, so in Malaysia, uh, we have six variants that have been identified, right? So you've got the alpha, beta, delta, kappa, theta, and eta, right? So you've got three VOCs and three VOIs, yep. various of concern, which are the nasty fellas, yep. various of interest, which can become nasty, but are not nasty just as yet. Yep. So Delta is the one that all of us are worried about. It's interesting to note that Delta is actually zero cases in Slango. Yep. It's not the Delta that's going around in Slango. Um, we're seeing it more in Negeri Sembilan, uh, Labuan, and a couple of cases in KL. But not, that's not the one that's causing huge outbreak in, uh, in Slango. The one that we see the highest in Slango with more than 100 cases is the beta. Yep. Right? So the beta variant is the one that's causing, uh, that's the South African one. That's the one that's causing most of the cases in Slango. So those are the ones that we're seeing at the moment in huge surges in, in clusters in Slango. You know, um, the other three VOIs are in Sarawak and Johor. So this is not something that we should be alarmed about so much. But having said that, to diagnose a variant COVID-19, it requires genetic studies, what we right. call genomic studies. Yep. And it's not cheap. It's not okay. easily done. And it's not done enough. Right. right. So I may see some patient that may feel um, that's probably a variant. But I uh, just treat and discharge that once as well. You know, so that's the mindset now. Discharge, go home. Get, you know, get the, get the healthcare burden down. No. You know, so we're not doing enough testing. That's why we not, may not be picking up the accurate numbers of variants. Yeah. But once again, don't be so alarmed. Sure. I just wanted to put it out there that we're not seeing a surge in Delta in our country. So don't be so worried about Delta protecting you with your, whatever vaccine that you've gotten. Yeah. So science changes, you know, so, you know, be, be aware about that as well. So thank you so much, Dr. Rakif, for debunking the COVID myth with uh, Dr. Raki Yadav, the consultant pediatrician and head of Department of Pediatrics in Arada Mansara. And she is actually very passionate about debunking all this myth and giving the right information. She's active on LinkedIn. She's active on Facebook. She's active here. Please do give her a follow uh, so that you'll be updated with the newest update because she is very, very fast. And, and I, I trust <laughs> her source of news because like the spousal, she will be up there because she, she has access to, to clarify rather than us checking with our brother-in-law, you know, our best cousin, you know. So Dr. Yes. Dr. Raki will have some of these updates ready with her. So we, we, before we go, Dr. Raki, I'll just thank you again. Do you have any parting thoughts for us? I just want to say that vaccination seems to be the only way out of this in terms of variant formations, in terms of reducing transmission, in terms of reducing healthcare burden. And in view of variants causing a lot of higher transmission rates and all that, it takes a larger population of vaccinated people to actually provide that same amount of protection. So the more we get vaccinated, the more of us get vaccinated, the faster, the better we actually go back to normalcy. So when, in that sense... I'd like to thank you, Kitchan, for giving me this opportunity to go on a public platform like this and providing accurate information that is up to date and to reassure some of you out there who may have certain um, worries or may have certain thoughts that you know are bugging them and I hope I've answered as much as I can. So thank you so much. I, I, I am humble and honored. You know, I was very conjunct to host you, you know, because you know, this is a <laughs> this is a serious topic, you know, you're very busy. Uh, your mom to four kids and, and you have very huge responsibility in your clinics. But despite that, your passion to give the right information out. So we thank you so much. And please, please thank you for your service of the nation and all, of all your colleagues as well. So thank you. And I look forward to, to seeing you again. Thank you, Dr. Raki. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you all for joining us. Bye-bye.